Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We are to rejoice and be glad in it. David said, I was glad when he said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Y'all, I can't believe it. we are in the month of August. This year is almost up, but God is yet good. He's kept us. He's a sustainer. He's a provider. And so we're grateful for the Lord on this morning. Y'all, we're worried about we're not here, but we just know that we're here to give God praise, glory, and honor because he is worthy and worthy to be praised. We ask you all to sing with us, shout with us, praise the Lord with us as we'll be led in music by our minister of music, Minister Shantae Norton. Y'all give her a hand as she lead us in praise and worship.
all this morning. Amen. 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 Our worship, our scripture this morning will come from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 through 34. And we'll be reading from the New King James Version, where the King James Version of the Word of the Lord. Again, this is first Sunday. Word of the Lord reads as follows. First Corinthians 11, chapter verses 23 through 34. It says, For I have received from the Lord that which I also deliver to you. That the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Therefore, whoever eats this bread or drinks this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. Let a man examine himself. And so let him eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eat and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this reason, many are weak and sick among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged, we are chastened by the Lord, that we may not be condemned with the world. Therefore, brethren, when you come together to eat, wait for one another. But if anyone is hungry, let him eat at home. Lest you come together for judgment. And the rest I will set in order when I come. Amen. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers of his word.
the Dawson's, Sister Stewart's family, they all tested negative for COVID-19. We thank God for his healing power. Y'all, God is still in the healing business. So we thank God for him being a healer. Great is he. And great is his faithfulness. Y'all, as you approach the throne of prayer, there are some names we want to keep in memory. Well, Pastor Chris comes forward. <laughs> um, I want y'all to keep Bishop Leon Witherspoon in prayer. He's still in the hospital. Talked to him on yesterday. The prayers that he will be released on tomorrow. He's been in that since Tuesday. What sound bad wind up being a blessing. Let me get his brief testimony on this point. He was just talking to his wife at the table. She went to her room to pray. And within matters of seconds, he fell out. And he had enough strength to call her name three times before he blanked out. She said normally she thought he was playing, but when she called, heard him call the other two times, she said that was a name in distress. So she was able to come get a hold of him. The ambulance took him in. They found blood clots, a large one in his lung. But God has sustained him. God is raising him up. Talked to him yesterday. He's in good spirits, but continue to pray for him. We also ask you all to continue to pray for Sister McGibbons as she's continued to fight this battle. Pray for Sierra and Brother Chris. As we know, the struggles of the world is real. But we serve a real God. Y'all keep me in prayer as well. As God continues to humble me as he continued to fix and mold me. As Pastor Chris would come and lead us in prayer. Amen to all of our virtual viewers and those of you that are here. I ask that you would assume a posture of prayer whereby we can go to our God in faith, knowing that he hears us every time we pray. Let us talk to our God. Eternal Heavenly Father, the one who was, who is, and who is to come. God, you are our sole source. You are our redeemer, our friend, our king, our savior, our protector, our guide, our healer. Oh God, you are the one true living God. Hallelujah. There is no one like you. Mm. No one stands beside oh you. No one stands above you. The earth is the Lord's. Mm. The fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein, oh God. You sit on high and you look down low, oh God. And we thank you, Father, that you are an omniscient God. Yes. Nothing ever catches you by surprise. Right. Oh, God, we thank you that you never change. You remain consistent with us. Even when we're not consistent with one another, we're not even consistent with ourselves. We're not consistent with you. Father, we thank you that your character is not predicated on how we behave. You are God and God alone. You are light. There is no darkness in you. You are holy and righteous. You are just and you lavish us with your favor. Your word reminds us that morning by morning new mercies we see. God, we thank you that you never run out of love. We thank you that you never run out of mercy. We thank you that you never run out of grace. Thank you that you never run out of healing. Thank you that you never run out of
run out of deliverance. Thank you that you never run out of your peace. Thank you that you never run out of giving us the victory because we belong to you. Thank you that you never run out of protecting us. Even from ourselves. Lord, the truth be told, we should all, we should all be in a place of self-destruction. But if it wasn't for the blood of Jesus, that we remember on this day that it reaches to the highest mountain and it flows to the lowest valley. That means it can reach all the way up to the White House, to the crack house, and everywhere in between. Father, we thank you that it gives us strength from day to day when we just want to give up. When we can't see our way out. When we don't know the decisions to make. When our bodies are ravishing with pain, when our hearts have been broken over and over, when we're filled with disappointment about this world, Father, we thank you that the blood still works. Father, so on this day, we just come to you as your sons and as your daughters. Some of us have uttered our desires of you, and some of us have tucked them deep in our heart, whether we are ashamed or we just tired, oh God, and we just need your help, Father. We ask that you would search us in the innermost being, even as David said, created us a clean heart. And renew a right spirit within us, oh God. Don't take your Holy Spirit away from us, but continue to make us over, even as you said to Jeremiah, oh God, you are the potter and we are the clay. Father, 
we know that your will is what's best for us. Even now in this moment, we pray. Oh God, because names have been lifted up and someone is really distressed today. Whether it's family or friend friction, whether it's an internal battle that they have all within themselves. Father, we pray that you will continue to heal. That you would give them your shalom. We don't pray for happiness because happiness is predicated on what's happening. But give us your shalom, your peace, your wholeness. That our mind, will, and emotions will be aligned with your purpose, your plan, and your will for our lives. Father, we pray that you would be with that individual in the hospital bedrooms, oh God. But they don't even have anyone that's worthy or willing to visit with them. They feel like they're all by themselves. The nurses and the doctors have become their family. Father, have mercy on them. Lord, we pray that you would be with all those that are suffering, oh God, from various ailments. And not just physical ailments, but the mental stresses of police brutality. An unjust justice system. Father, we pray that you would help them to understand that while we may not always know why or where, we know who. And you are the answer. You are never slacking in your promises. And Father, we thank you that all things indeed work together for the good of those that love you and all the called according to your purpose. I thank you, God, that nothing shall separate us from the love of God that is found in Christ Jesus. Neither death, nor life, nor things to come, nor things in the past. Lord God, we thank you that nothing shall separate us. Your love grows deep and wide. And even when we get stuck in the muck and the miry clay, we thank you that you reach down and you pick us up. Yes, Lord. You clean us up, oh God. You turn us around and you place us on solid ground. On the rock of Jesus. So, Father, we thank you for saving us. Yes. We thank you for redeeming. We thank you for healing. We thank you for providing. We thank you for loving us. And we know that there is power in prayer. Now, God, whatever I have failed to ask or bring to your throne, Father, I trust that you won't fail to grant. But it's all according to your will. Because indeed, your will is what's best for us. Oh, God, I pray that you would be with every preacher, every pastor that shall proclaim the gospel on today. Be with every wayward soul. The soul that's contrary to you. I pray that you would touch their heart. That they will have an experience of oh God. Even as Paul that persecuted the church. They will have an experience. And they will say Lord, Lord. And they will change. Because they have truly encountered you. God you are great. And I know that your word declares that nothing shall be called impossible. So I thank you for delivering and setting free today and doing what only you can because you alone are God. Yes. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray a special prayer for Pastor Reed that you would speak through him according to your word and your will. That the Holy Spirit, oh God, would give him the extra boost that is needed that he would not preach it of himself, oh God. He would not preach opinions, but he would preach what the word of God says. Because it's the word of God that destroys the yoke, that frees and liberates your people, oh God. So we thank you for salvation and freedom in Jesus Christ. And we thank you that your word is still alive and quick, sharper than any two-edged sword. Take out and you put in, oh God. All for your glory. It's in the name of Jesus Christ, the only risen Savior.
that we pray and we ask it all and we declare it to be victory because we belong to you. In Jesus' name.
Say, I got it. If you need a little bit more time, say, hold up, wait a minute. First Samuel, the first chapter, verses 1 through 15. Though it's lengthy, but we have to read it to get the context of the scripture for the day. And I'll be reading from the New King James Version of the Word of the Lord. I believe everybody have it. Word of the Lord reads as follows. Now there was a certain man of Ramathim, Zophim, of the mountains of Ephraim, and his name was Elkanah, the son of Jerotham, the son of Elihu, the son of Tahu, the son of Zuth, an Ephraimite. And he had two wives. The name of one was Hannah. And the name of the other was Peniah. Peniah, I'm sorry. Peniah had children, but Hannah had no children. This man went up from the city yearly to worship and sacrifice to the Lord of hosts in Shiloh. Also, the two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of the Lord, were there. Now the time came from Elkanah to make an offering, he would give portions to Peninnah, his wife, and to all her sons and daughters. But to Hannah, he would give a double portion, for he loved Hannah, although the Lord had closed her womb. And her rival also provoked her, provoked her severely to make her miserable because the Lord had closed her womb. So it was so, year by year, when she went up to the house of the Lord, that she provoked her. Therefore she wept and did not eat. Then Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hananiah, why do you weep? Why do you not eat? Why is your heart grieved? Am I not better than ten sons? So Hannah 
arose after they had finished eating and drinking in shallow. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat by the doorpost of the tabernacle of the Lord. And she was in bitterness of soul and prayed to the Lord and wept in anguish. Then she made a vow and said, O Lord, a host, if you will indeed look on my affliction of your maid servant and remember me and not forget your maid servant. But will give your maid servant a male child. Male child. Then I will give him to the Lord all the days of his life, and no razor shall come upon his head. And it happened as she continued praying before the Lord that Eli washed her mouth. Now Hannah spoke in her heart, only her lips moved, but her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli thought she was drunk. So Eli said to her, How long will you be drunk? Put your wine away from me. But Hannah answered and said, No, my Lord, I am a woman of sorrowful spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor intoxicating drink, but have poured out my soul before the Lord. Mm -hmm. Amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the hearers, readers, and doers, where you all may be seated in the presence of the Lord. For these few moments, we want to preach on the subject, frustrating faith, favor, I'm sorry, frustrating favor, frustrating favor. I don't know about you all, but I know that sometimes favor can be frustrating. Some of us, we can look over our lives. We can see how God has made a way for us. We can see how God has opened doors. We can see how God has healed. God has sustained. God has kept. God has allowed you to thrive on your jobs, allow you to be a voice to people who look up to you. God has favored some of us. And whether we want to admit it or not, favor feels good. It feels good to be favored. It feels good to know because of God favoring you that you can walk somewhere and they will skip you in front of a line. It's a good thing when you can go somewhere and because of your favor that you can go to Starbucks and they know who you are and they'll tell you don't worry about paying today. Favor feels good. One thing I know about favor, it doesn't feel good all the time. Because if you are favored, then you are always the one that people call on when they need something. God has blessed you financially and it feels good, but then it doesn't feel good because when somebody needs a handout, you're the first person they call. You're the third person they call. You're the sixth person they call. And you're the last person they call. That can be frustrating. It can be frustrating when family members, you see you, you've got your education and you, you're doing good on your job only to come to you and tell you you think you're better than everybody else. Favor has gotten you to that point, but it's frustrating because people want to downplay or make you feel bad because of the favor you have obtained. Maybe God favors you and you are blessed to have a husband, somebody wants a husband, and all they do is downplay your relationship. Favor feels good. But at times, favor can be frustrating. Because when people, when you are favored, people assume that every time they ask you for something, your reply should be yes. Every time they ask you to borrow some money, they figure you should say yes because you're favored. But then once you tell them no, 
Then it becomes to question your character. Oh, I knew you're not saved. You're not all of that because you got it and you want in it to be. Not because you told them yes, because you told them yes before and still they didn't appreciate it, but because you told them no. Now they want to ridicule you. Now they want to downplay you. And then when things shake in your life, then they want to say, I knew it wasn't nothing to you. I knew you wasn't saved. God wouldn't allow that to happen to you. God would have allowed you to make it through. But because they don't understand the favor of God, they can pick at you to a point that it frustrates you and you cut everybody off and you don't want to hear from nobody. If you felt that way before, you're not the first person to feel that way. To give you a little background of our text, we are informed an individual by the name of Elkanah had two wives, Penina and Hannah. The Bible tells us that Penina was able to birth children, but Hannah's womb was closed up. She couldn't have babies. But we informed that Elkanah loved Hannah more than he loved Penina. But Penina was able to give Elkanah something that Hannah could that was children. And so we were informed in the text that every year Elkanah doing what they were informed to do in that culture yearly is to go up and to give offerings and sacrifice unto the Lord. And when he did it every year, we we're informed in the text that he gave a blessing to Penina and her sons and daughters, which tells me that with an S, Penina had more than three children. But we informed that Hannah received a double portion because he loved her, because she was favored in his eyes. But we also know that people can see when God favors somebody, but yet they don't understand it. And so Penina, we're informed year by year, will make fun of Hannah because she could not have children. This was Penina where it says, since he's giving you a double blessing, I'm going to show you that you're still not where you need to be or you're not all that because you can't have children. And so Hannah, in her anger, would fast, would not eat. Elkanah would look at Hannah because he don't understand. Because he's doing everything to show Hannah. He appreciates her. He washes the dishes. He washes the clothes. He cut the grass. He makes sure she gets her pedicure. He makes sure she gets her hair done. He doesn't get it. And husband, sometimes we just don't get it. We try. We don't get it. He says, why are you not eating? Why do you feel this way? Am I worth more than ten sons? I give you, I try my best. But he didn't understand. And we're informed here in the text that that made Hannah upset. Because now Hannah's at a place she knows that she's favored. But right now it is very frustrating to her every year to see what's happening. And so how should we act? When we know God has blessed us, God has favored us, but even in spite of all that, we are frustrated with what's going on around our life. We're frustrated because we wish this was better. We're frustrated because we wish our bills was smaller. We're frustrated because we wish we had more of the money in the bank account. We're frustrated because my job is tripping. How should we? Well, we'll learn three things in the text, the way we should act when we're frustrated in times. 
Knowing that we're failing, the first thing that we should do in the text teaches us is learn to ignore antagonistic people. Learn to ignore antagonistic people. Okay. One thing I know about favor is favor is visible. Favor is visible. How's favor been visible? They know that you supposed to be broke. But God bless you with that new house, that car. All right. They know you're not working. But they see you shopping at grocery stores and stores every day. They, they, they know you've been bedridden. Hey, but you can't jump around with your favor is visible. They don't see how you was able to get that. And husband with all you've been through, but you got him. Favor <laughs> is visible. Right. That person wish they could sing like Minister Norton. Favor is <laughs> visible. And the truth of the matter is everybody is not thrilled or excited because God has favored you. was blessed because she could have kids. But she still wanted what Hannah had. Come on, make that claim. In their culture, woman was considered extremely blessed to be able to have sons and she had sons and not realizing she was in a good state but because she saw how favored Hannah was, she wanted that also. Is that just like us? We're not happy with where we are, knowing that we're blessed, knowing that the Lord has made a way. He's given us a car. He's given us a house. But because they're riding in a Mercedes and I'm riding in a Nissan, I want what they have. Because uh, I'm making 50000 a year, they're making 150000 a year. I want what they have. Not realizing you are blessed right where you are. That's how we do. Social media has made us envious of other people's favor, not realizing we are blessed where we are. Yep. So the Bible tells us that Pen and I, because she didn't like that this individual was favored, talked about her day in and day out because she wanted what she had. She wanted the love from Elkanah that she received. But the reality is, you all, we just can't have everything that we want. If we had everything we want, we won't need God. Sometimes we struggle with things for God to show us that, you know what, I'm the reason why you're here. I'm the reason why you're making it. I'm the reason why you are strong. Some of us want complete healing right then. But God says, no, I want to take you through the gradual process so you can see that my grace is sufficient for you. That when you are weak, then I am made strong because he is showing us that you can't make this on your own. But Penai sees the blessing. She sees the favor. She sees him getting her, getting a double blessing, and she continues to bug her. And the Bible says that she bugged her year by year. But what's amazing is that she didn't bug her at home. No, the Bible says that when they went to the temple to offer sacrifice, which means she made a point to try to embarrass her in the house of the Lord. In other words, she was saying, look, you ain't all that, baby. Stop testifying the way that you do. Stop shouting the way that you shout because you don't got it all together right now. Now, mind you, she didn't do it at home, but the Bible said year by year, when they entered the temple, she began to put her on blast and laugh at her and let her know that I am more blessed than you. Yes, you got that, but I got the ultimate blessing. It's a shame when we want to tear our people down instead of building them up. But it goes on in the house of the Lord. We need to denounce that spirit, cast that spirit out, and build our people up. That's right. All right. And so it's in the text, the Bible says that when they went to the temple every year, she, she harassed them. But what I love in the text is that Hannah didn't do what most of us do. Y'all yeah. know, y'all know somebody Try to call me out, we gonna buck right back at him. Uh, you ain't all that. That's why he did me more than you anyway. No, no, no. Yeah, you got the bank, but I got the bank account. No, Hannah didn't entertain it. 
That's a word for us right there. When people want to question your walk with the law, when people want to question why you do what you do, sometimes it's best to ignore them because they don't know your story. They don't know what you're going through. They don't know what you've been through to, in order to get the double blessing that Hannah was getting. But Hannah, the Bible tells us that Hannah, when she gets angry, and I can only imagine the text says year by year, which means this has been a buildup of mess, buildup of things, buildup of issues, buildup of her feeling like she's not uh, more of a woman. Because again, in that culture, if you didn't have sons, then you was considered cursed. And in Hannah's case, she's like, Lord, I'm doing all that I can do. Lord, I'm living the way that I should live. Lord, I want to tell Panana how I really feel. But because, because God, I serve you, God, because I'm saved and sanctified, Lord. I don't want to go back to what I used to do, God, because and even though I don't do it, it's still there. I still know how to curse you out. I still know how to read to your right. I still know how to put people. Look, just because we got the blood of Jesus doesn't mean you forgot. But I believe Hannah had enough dignity and respect about herself that she said, I'm not going to stoop down to that level. I'm not going to allow you to embarrass me in the, in the midst of the temple. No, I'm just going to hold it in and I'm going to seek the face of the Lord and I'm going to stop right there for some of y'all. I don't know who may be barring you, whether at church or at home, at home or at work, at work or wherever you go. Don't pop off at the person. Lord forbid. Look, just pray for them, move on, ignore them. Don't allow jealous people to make you feel that you're inadequate because the Lord is blessing you in ways that they wish they had. Because what we can tend to do is we can tend in our, uh, in our innocence to want what she have, not understanding I'm yet blessed. Hannah was yet blessed. But even in her blessing, even in favor, every year she gained frustration. This is a never-ending wall. This is a never-ending trial. Lord, I've been in this situation for so long. God, can this situation change? Lord, it's been eight years and I'm still dealing with it. Lord, it's been 15 years. It's still in my face. Lord, after 20 years, I'm still dealing with it. Lord, I'm tired of dealing with this year after year after year. Lord, I can't make it. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. But we got to remember that his anger is only for a moment, but his favor is for life. So even though I've been dealing with this mess for 20 years, God, I thank you for your favor anyway. God, even though I've been dealing with the trial for 15 years, God, I thank you that you allow me to wake up every morning to be able to deal with it. Lord, I know that my feelings are being in, in issues right now, and I'm going through pain. I 
treat you right. Baby, I gave you all that you need. I should be more than ten sons. He didn't understand. And Hannah didn't try to explain it to him anymore. I believe she got tired of explaining it to him. I believe she even told him before. <laughs> Y'all are making us husbands look bad, but oh well. I believe she told him before, look, this is what's wrong with me. Look, this is what I'm going through. Look, this is what you, you still don't get it. And so she said, I'm not I'm going somewhere. All right, going somewhere. What I like is she didn't go to the club. Yeah. Because she understood if I go to the club and dance it out, if I leave, I'm still dealing with this same right, issue. Right, right. She didn't go to Specs or to Total Wine because she understood that if I got drunk, it's going to help me uh, erase it for momentary reasons. But as soon as the, this liquor wear off, I got to deal with the problem and the hangover. Right, right, right. She didn't go to Pookie and Nene and them because all they were going to do was let them drink and smoke a problem and do something else. No, but the Bible says that she went to the temple. She went to the house of the Lord. And that's the word for us right now. When we're dealing with issues, when we have problems, don't run and tell your best friend unless your best friend can pray and tell you what the word says. No, I want you to go to the house of the Lord and tell the Lord your problems. Tell the Lord your issues. Let them know what you're dealing with. Because Psalm 121 says, in my distress, I cried to the Lord. Lord, I'm being a submissive wife. Lord, I cook. 
looking clean. Lord, I read my word and pray. But it seems like it's not changing. God, I'm tired. I'm ready to throw in the towel. Lord, I quit. But before she got to that point, she said, you know what? I know I want to quit. But it's something that's leading me. I can submit something that led her to the house. And I'm going to tell you what led her. The spirit of the Lord that was in her led her to the house of the Lord. And some of us can testify that when I wanted to throw in my towel, I said I wasn't going to give God another chance. But some way, somehow, I still wanted up back in the house of the Lord, praying to God, Lord, heal my cry. Lord, help me. Lord, I can't make it without you. Lord, how? But then, when you get to the house of the Lord, then you renew your strength. Yeah. And then you say, you know what? I can hold on yeah. <laughs> just a little while longer. Hey, Lord, I can make it just a little while longer. Lord, I can survive and breathe just a little while longer. She went to the house of the Lord. It kind of reminds me of the prophetess by the name of Anna who's in the book of Luke. The Bible says that she had married to her husband, and she was married for seven years, then her husband dies, and now she's at a point that she's a young thundercat, and she can go back out there and get a new husband, or she can live as a widow and be broke, but the Bible says in Luke, the second chapter, verses 36 through 38, that when her husband dies, that she went to the temple, and the Bible says she never left the temple, she served the Lord with fasting and prayer, what do you say, when trials and tribulation, the best thing for you to do is not just go to the house of the Lord, but serve, work, be involved, fast, pray. That's how you make it through. And then when it gets hard, you repeat the cycle. Go to the house of the Lord. Serve, fast, pray. And then next week you do the same thing. Pray, serve, pray, fast. And then you do the same thing to the point that you have no room for any negativity to come in. You have no because your routine is okay. I'm going to go to the church. I'm going to serve, fast, pray. And that way the enemy can't, don't have room to infiltrate your mind. David said this. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against me. What David was saying is said, since your word is in my heart, it's no room for nothing else to enter in. And the reason why we go it's because the word is not here in our heart and we allow other things to come in and infiltrate us. But if we eat this word, we get full on this word, then we have nothing else but the word of God in us. Then we have no time for foolishness. She served the Lord. Hannah went to the house of the Lord. She didn't forsake God. When you're going through, don't forsake the Lord. Because the Lord won't forsake you. When favor hurts, ignore antagonistic people. But finally, be diligent in worship. Right. Be diligent in worship. When I look into this text, Hannah, when she goes into the house of the Lord, one thing that sticks out, she didn't go and see what sister such and such had on. She didn't go to sit down and see who, who was preaching today. She, go, she didn't go in and look around and see, okay, who smells bad? She didn't go looking and talk about, oh, this person got a new Michael Kors purse. She didn't worry about none of that. No, the Bible says when she went in, she went in to worship. And that's the word right there. When we go to the house of the Lord, it's not just enough to not forsake the house of God. But you got to go in it with the right spirit. Because the truth be told, sometimes we enter the house of God with the wrong spirit. What you mean? Whatever issue you got out there, you bring it inside. God forbid. If this person talked about you, you bring that in. God forbid. No. She went in with a mind to connect with the Lord. What worship does, worship first allows you to forget about your problem. The problem still exists. But when you worship God, you're in a space with just you and God. 
have you ever been to that place where I, I when you worship God, even though all hell was breaking loose, yeah. but because you worship God, you don't you forgot what you was going through, you forgot the mess that you drove along thinking about, you forgot what you cooked for dinner because you was in a space where it was just me and the Lord worship allowed you to be in that space with God, but it also allows you to see and understand things differently. Because when you in a mind, a, a carnal mind, you see things carnally. My, my, my wife has a saying, and it frustrates me, but it's true. Whenever I do something to make her angry, Brother Chris, Brother Jackson, this is what she'll tell me. Don't let the devil use you. Now I ain't trying to hear that. She'll tell me, don't let the devil use you. And I'm like, the devil ain't using me. But the reality is, the devil will use anybody. I don't care how saved, sanctified you are and Holy Ghost feel, the devil can use the pastor, he can use the preachers, he can use the husband, he can use the wife, he can use whatever it is to accomplish his goal. And the reality is, the devil gonna use the closest thing to you to get you to act crazy. And so, if you're married, eight times out of ten, it's your husband. <laughs> if you're single, eight times out of ten, it's your children. <laughs> If you got both, it can be both at the same time. The devil will use. Ever. But when you in worship, then you're not thinking carnally. You're thinking spiritually. And that's why I like I, I don't like it, but she said, don't let the devil use. Because what she's saying is, it is not you, but it is, it is that spirit that's trying to use you. And we'll get to a place where we'll stop blaming the individual, but we'll start blaming the spirit that's influencing that individual. That's when you get to a space of worship. That's when you're spiritually connected because that's what Paul says, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And so if I'm making my wife uncomfortable, it is not me, but it is the spirit that's influencing me. Let me, uh, let me, let me unpack that because if you're a child of God and you feel with the spirit, then only one spirit can live within you. But that doesn't mean spirits can't come to try to influence you. And so when that spirit of, of antagonistic being ugly come, you use the word of the Lord. Just like Jesus did when Satan came. If you the son of God, turn these rocks into bread. Because I know you hungry. Jesus said it is written. And so you've got to understand in order to fight against the devil, first you've got to have the spirit of God and you've got to know how to use the word of God. Because if you read into this text, the Bible says that when Hannah was praying, this lets you know sometimes the leader may not be all spiritually inclined like he should because the Bible says when Eli looked in, Bless y'all. Eli looked at her and thought she was drunk. The pastor looked at the member. Now, mind you, he sees her every year. He sees her when it's time to give an offering. He sees her. And Eli says, Woman, throw your liquor away. Is that just like the church when a person ain't been there so long, we tell them, you know, you know better than that. You should have been coming to church. You know you should have been here. Why you ain't been here so long? You need to stop acting like that. And not realize that the reason why that person had to came because they may be dealing with something and you pushing them further away. Now, Eli tells her, stop being drunk. But what I like about her, she understood. You know what? Eli is not my God. Eli don't know me. I'm go because I'm here not to serve Eli. I'm not here to impress Eli. I'm here because I need a word or a healing from the Lord. So don't come because of the character. Don't come because of the individual. Don't come because your past is all on television. Don't come because he may look clean in 6'5". No! Don't come for that. You come 
because you have a need from the Lord and you got to understand the reason why Eli's situation is important because as you read further in the book of 1 Samuel, Eli had two sons who were supposed to be priests and they was after the fool and one could submit that sometimes because of the pastor home life he ain't going to come to church in the right spirit and I just believe at this particular time, Eli wasn't in the right spirit because his sons was acting a fool and so he came to church his spirit wasn't right and he couldn't see what his member was going through and so the leader needs prayer too because sometimes they can miss the mark but what I love right here is that she didn't allow what Eli said to push her away or to deter her from her worship. No, she confronts him and he says, oh man of God, I'm not drunk like you think. Yeah. I'm a woman of God who's going through some things. Yeah. And right now I'm talking to the Lord yeah. and so if you don't understand what I'm saying, it ain't for you anyway. If you don't understand why I am, it's not for you to answer anyway because I understand that my help don't come from you. My help don't come from them. My help and my answer come from the Lord. And so, no, I'm not drunk. This is just something that me and the Lord is conversing about. Yes, yes. Yeah. And sometimes your answer could also put the man in God back to the place where he needs to be. What do you mean? It's right there in verse 16 after she began to explain herself. Then Eli begins to give her a word from God. First, he thought that she was there for the wrong reasons. Because one could submit. He was going through some things. But then when she began to testify why she was there, then one could submit that he got himself back together and he began to walk in his priestly role because in verse 14 he was Eli but when you get to verse 16 he became the priest and he said be a good cheer daughter for the Lord heard your cry he went from forget his problem to realizing I'm here to do a duty from the Lord and so sometimes the members worship can get the leader back right Oh, in my clothes, y'all, I'm done. Frustrating favor is real because we go through things in this life. Jesus said it is impossible that you live this life and don't go through trials and tribulations. He said, you are my children. I picked y'all up. You're a favor, but you're going to go through some frustrating times. But I love what the word of the Lord says. He said, but be of good cheer. You, it may be frustrating, but be of good cheer. Because you got to remember that I died for you. You got to remember that I rose for you. You got to remember that I'm sitting on the right hand of the Father for you. And so when you go through your trial, when you go through your test, when you have issues, you can know without a shadow of a doubt that sits up on the right hand of the Father and I'm making intercession for you. Even in your frustrated times, you are yet favored because my favor is for all. Is there anybody here who's grateful that the favor of God is not predicated on how I feel? It's not predicated on what I'm going through. It's not predicated on what my bank looks like. It's not predicated on who I connected to. But it's all because of Him. Hallelujah. So in my closing, in my closing, Thank you, Lord. ignore the people who mean you no good. No, if you don't care about me, so be it. I'm going to pray for you, mind your business. <laughs> but when we're going through, don't forsake the house of the Lord because when we go through, that's the first thing we eliminate is going to church. Because I don't want people asking me no questions. I don't want them looking at me crazy. 
Because all they're going to want to do be knows, well, if you go on Sunday and come into the house of the Lord with a smile on your face, yeah. come in here with a praise in your heart, yeah. come in here not looking like what you're going through, not looking like what you've been through, then they won't ask you nothing. Yeah. <laughs> and finally, be diligent in worship. Be diligent in worship. Make worship a priority. Yes, sir. Make worship a part of your life. Because what I've learned, and I'm continuing to learn, is when I don't worship, is when things go, get chaotic. When I don't worship, is when I focus on the cares of the world. Right, right. But when I worship and thank God, that's when I realize that I am blessed, I am fifthly made, I am highly favored, and I understand that we remain do it for night, but joy will come in the morning. And we know that all things work together for the good to them that love God and are called according to his purpose. And this is the will of God concerning you, which is in Christ Jesus. And so, God, I thank you. Thank you, Lord. And even in my frustrated favor, I'm yet blessed. God, just like you did for Hannah, in due time, Things will change. In due time, things will change because everything on this earth has an end date. Everything has an end date. Your trial has an end date. Your food has an end date. Every expiration date, that's the best way, expiration date, that's, that's a better way to use it. Everything has an expiration date. That sickness you're dealing with, either God is going to heal you, or it's going to do away when, when you die. It has an expiration date. So trust God. Because frustrating favor is real, but my God is also real. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, I thank you. I thank you, God. Because, God, you've given us everything we need yes. to be able to overcome frustrating times. We thank you, Father, because you gave us your word. Thank you, Lord. That God is through. Father, you gave us your spirit. That's connected with you. So, God, when we're going through tough times, help us not to forsake the house of God. Because, Father, we know that in the house of God, we will hear a word from you, God. That will give us the strength to continue to hold on to your never-changing hand. Father, for that person, God, who's going through right now, you remind them, God, that we'll go through trials and tribulations. But you remind them to be of good cheer. Because of you, we've overcome. We've overcome sickness. We've overcome despair. We've overcome selfishness. We've overcome doubt. Right now, you've tried.
tried everything. You've tried the drugs. You've tried friends. You've tried to handle it by yourself. But it didn't get no better. It feels like it's only gotten worse. I want to invite you to try Jesus. If you're here, I encourage you to stand. Those of you watching this online, let us know in the comments.
that you thought we were worth dying for. That while we were yet sinners, you died. So, Father, today we come to you, oh God. Before we even partake of this, these elements, the, the wine and the bread that represents your body and your blood, oh God, we ask that you would cleanse us. Father, that you would forgive us for our sins, for those wrong choices, those thoughts, words, deeds, those things that we plan to do, oh God, that you would help us and you would get us back on the right path that we will represent you and represent you to the world in a way that will glorify you. Father, we thank you for your forgiveness and your amazing grace. Yes. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask it all. We thank you for even forgiving us as we are forgiving others. In that name we pray and ask it all. Amen. For our virtual viewers, we ask that you would utilize this time also uh, to try to secure you a few elements that are a proper representation of the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. You can get you some crackers, you can get some grape juice, get some water, just something that will represent the body and the blood. Also, I want to make this uh, very clear that this is the believer's table. This is not to be taken by any and everyone. If you have not professed that the Lord Jesus, he is God, that he has died and has risen from the dead, that he alone is the Savior of the world, you should not partake of this. The Word of God reminds us that when you do so, in an unworthy matter, you eat and drink damnation to your soul. So we ask that you would not partake of this if you have not openly professed that the Lord Jesus is your Savior. And I'm going to have, I'm going to ask for those of you that would like to receive and have made the professional faith that you just raise your hand or stand and we'll serve you. Spilled for you. I am 
the precious Lamb of God. I have no blemishes, yes. no stains. I have no errors, no flaws. And so because of my blood, you are now cleansed my God. forevermore. And let us drink together. Amen. Thank God for the blood my God. of Jesus. We leave this place thanking the Lord or this moment thanking the Lord for his blood in a celebratory fashion when we remember we celebrate because we couldn't have done it by ourselves Amen. it'd be nice if we had like some sprinkles or some type of celebrate <laughs> That's just me and my imagination. Y'all just have to forgive me. I just, I just say celebration. I'm thankful. Little should come out the ceiling and everything. All right. uh, amen, amen. Uh, but what I, I do want to uh, remind you all that don't allow First Sunday to be the only Sunday where you remember what the Lord has done for you. You should remember that He died for you every single day. When you wake up, Lord, thank you for another day and thank you for dying for me because you're going to need His mercy. You're going to need grace, you're going to need to remember that his blood, his love covers a multitude of sin. And so we thank God that he has chosen to die for us and he loves us in spite of ourselves. I said before you right now for the announcements, I just want to provide you with uh, just a few reminders that we do have Bible study. Bible study will continue every Wednesday at 7 o'clock p.m. And so we invite you to join us if you are led to do so. And you know what? Even if you just tired, just come on out. Just go and get your car. Put it in reverse out your driveway. And then put it in drive. Turn around. Come on up the street. And make the extra effort, the attempt. It's not for us. It's all for God. We can sacrifice to go to basketball games, concerts, go out of town and chill with everyone else. So let's go ahead and make the time for the investment in our spiritual maturation so that we can be better this disciples all for his glory. So Bible study is at 7 o'clock p.m. every Wednesday at 4714 FM 1960 West Suite 103 Houston, Texas 77069. For our virtual viewers that are clearly in another country or in another state, we ask you to continue to support us. Uh, we will continue to uh, stream live on multiple platforms. You know that we are already on Facebook and YouTube. We also make sure that different announcements are made available to you on Instagram. So please make sure that you would check us out at uh, We Are Encouragement Temple. So you can utilize those handles on Instagram as well as YouTube. And you can also find us on Facebook by those means. We also want to encourage you to give. The Bible reminds us that we have a duty an obligation to give even as we have been blessed. We have been blessed to be a blessing. And so as the Lord has been opening doors for you, has been sustaining you, we ask you to bring both the tithe and the offering. The tithe, for those of you that don't know, is the first 10% of all your increase. And so uh, this part is not involved, but I want to put this this point with this. If you want a gross blessing, then you need to tithe off that gross. If you want a net blessing, then go ahead and do the net. But do as the Lord has been leading you to give. Whichever matter, just make sure that you give uh, with a cheerful heart. Don't look at God as a, as a bill collector. He's not a bill collector. He's giving you everything that you have. And he just said, partner with me so I can continue the kingdom building purpose. I'm giving you everything that you have. And so just show your love and your appreciation through his obedience. And by giving the tithe and the offering, you should be smiling when that offer trade comes around. Smiling as you're going on PayPal and cash out. Just smiling right. as you're doing. Knowing that our God is not going to leave you stranded. Yes. But he's promised to provide. He owns everything. And so we ask that you partner with us. No contribution is too great or too small. Just do as your heart is leading you to do so. And so also we want to remind you that our back to school drive will be this upcoming Saturday at 10 a.m. Yeah. At 10 a.m. We've had multiple persons reach out to us as far as the uh, the drive. And I want to say, when I say drive, we're not necessarily saying that we're asking for things. We're trying to bless people. Right. And so we're asking that you will come on out. If you've already registered, we have your name. And so we just ask that even as you have registered for to receive these school supplies, we ask that you have your children.
children with thee, please. We want to be able to lay our eyes on them and still love on them, even as we're blessing them. And so we ask that you bring your children with you uh, and that you will let others know. If you have not registered by August the 1st, this was this past week, uh, the registration period has closed. But if there is a need and we have the supplies available, we will not turn you away. We just ask that you will come. We'll have you fill out a, a, a card so we can just have your information and keep you available, uh, updated on the different uh, events and initiatives that Encouragement has also in the future. But we want you to bring your children uh, here so we can love on them as well. Again, that's uh, August the 13th. That's this Saturday at 10 a.m. until supplies are gone. If you want to just give towards this initiative, you can always swing by. We'll be here, and we'll receive the donation so we can continue to be a blessing to the community and the household of faith, even on the north side of Houston. Then we also want to remind you of our community fall festival, which is a community initiative in itself, where we have the opportunity to provide food, fun, fellowship, games, and all kinds of things for the community. And so more information will be made available to, uh, to you. But that date is October 22nd. And it was at 11 a.m., right? Yeah. 11 a.m. is when that event will start. Uh, we will try to do uh, more and give you more information. You may hear about it even on different radio stations. We're just trying to make sure everyone knows to come on out to Encouragement Temple because we seek to be a blessing. Those are your announcements. Again, we thank God for everyone that is with us. Please govern yourself accordingly to that. We want to make sure uh, also that as uh, Brother Emery is going around, what are you going to go ahead, uh, collecting the offering, we're going to go ahead and, and pray, and then I'm just going to remind us all what we, what Encouragement Temple is all about. But let us pray over the offering. Lord God, we thank you for giving and for being a blessing to your people. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus that no one will go lacking because they gave today. Father, strengthen someone's faith. Encourage someone's heart. Oh God, let them know that you own everything and you already see where they are. Father, I thank you for even the widow's might, the very small that someone would give, oh God, that it would be what we need to continue your purpose here on earth. Father, we bless your name and we thank you. It's in the name of Jesus Christ that we pray and ask it all. Amen and amen. So again, we virtually and in person, but I want to remind everyone, and I encourage you to remember this, because this is how you can, uh, when you remember the motto, then you can know what, what we are envisioning and our goal. Our motto is, Encouragement Temple is the place where Christ is edified through our worship and our witness, where believers are empowered through the preached gospel and discipleship, and where the community is enlightened on God's saving grace to all. Amen. Please govern yourself according to those announcements. I'm going to turn you back into the hands of Pastor. Huh? Oh, Pastor Reese says, I'm sorry. Please still govern yourself according to those announcements. Um, before I turn you back into the hands of Pastor Reed, I want to uh, celebrate August birthdays. Uh, we have uh, excited people up in here. Uh, who's excited about August? They said, man, it's been so long, eight months. We got to wait for a birthday, but we want to celebrate. Those of you that have birthdays in August, if your birthday's in August, uh, please stand up so that we can celebrate all the August birthdays. If you're virtual and you have an August birthday, let us know. Just type in the comments when your birthday is. Uh, if you have an anniversary in August, let us know what day that is and when, how long you've been married, how old you're going to be. Uh, but right now, we have two uh, little ones that are uh, going to be celebrating birthdays back to back. Uh, we have Evan Reed, who will turn eight on August the 21st. And then Evan Reed, who's going to turn four. Ethan. Ethan. Ethan, I called your name twice. Evan is going to turn eight on the 21st. Ethan is going to turn four on the 28th. So the 21st for Evan, the 28th, y'all know this other baby just making me think all kinds of stuff. Uh, the, the 21st is for August, 28th is for, uh, 21st, is for, 21st Evan. is for Evan. Help me, Holy Spirit. 28th is for Ethan. Yes. August 28th is for Ethan. August 21st is for Evan. And he's going to turn four. So four and eight. So we thank, I thank y'all for forbearing with me as I get this all together. Uh, but uh, they're, they're excited about their birthday. And so, you know, um, their birthdays both fall on Sundays. And so 
was back to back Sunday, so you all have an opportunity to, you know, just tell them to, hey, happy birthday, and I'm sure they're gonna make sure that you don't forget. Uh, and so, but we hope that you would uh, just celebrate with them. It's a big deal to the kids, so uh, we thank God for that. Uh, we pray that you continue to pray for them as they grow. And also, I just want to uh, just say, uh, pray for all the students as they prepare to go back to school. They go at different times. So much is going on in this world. So much. So pray for our babies, not just those that encourage me to help, but across this world. So much is going on. And so much has caused them to be traumatized over the events that have happened in their neighboring schools. So please pray for them. I'm going to turn you back into the hands of Pastor Reed. He's going to provide with the blessing and the benediction. Amen. Amen. Now, before we dismiss, let us all just touch and agree as we pray. Because some kids have already been back to school. Some go this week, some go the week after. So we're about to, we'll pray now for our babies. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we thank you. God, we thank you for allowing us to be here at this moment, God, to ask and petition for you, God, to watch over our children, God, as they go back to school, Father. Father, you have told us, God, that you care for the children. So, God, as they're there at the schools, God, elementary school level, the middle school, high school, even the college level, God. Father, that you protect them. That you keep them covered, God. You, you protect them from the danger, God, that happens in the school. Shield them, God, from gun shooting. Protect them from molesters, God. Father, give them teachers who want to see them thrive educationally, God. Who will teach our babies. Who's concerned for our children. Who will have patience and compassion for them, God. God, allow our children, God, to be obedient, God. Allow them, God, to do well in school, to listen, to learn, to be outstanding children. God, be with the teachers and the administrators, God. Be with the superintendents, God. Because these are tough times. But, Father, we thank you, God, because you're a God that knows all and sees all. Father, I ask you, God, to, to touch the parents of the children, God. Allow them, God, to see the best in their children. Allow them, God, to build on what's being taught. Allow them to be a presence. God, we thank you. Because, God, in this season, they're dealing with much, but in this season, we know that nothing is too hard and impossible for you. And so, God, just as you gave us a successful year last year, God, we believe in you will give us a successful year this year. Father, we bless and we thank you right now. And we ask these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And we say amen. Amen. We just believe that the Lord will protect and guide and be there for our babies Amen. this year. Let us govern ourselves to these announcements. If there's not anything else, we ask you all to stand as we give forth the benediction. To the King Eternal, immortal, invisible, to the only wise God, be glory, honor, dominion, and power. Father God, we ask you, God, to be with us and protect us, God. Father, we ask you to bring us back to the house of the Lord again, God. Father, we love and we thank you right now because you are kind. Protect us as we leave this place, God. 
And God, when we get to our various homes and destinations, God, allow it to be the way it was when we left it, God. Safe, sound, protected. And Father, we ask you, God, to bring us back here to the house of God this Wednesday for Bible study. God, we bless and we thank you right now. We ask these things. By the name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we say amen. amen. And amen, we'll see you this Wednesday. Until then, 